Thanks, buddy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hi there, you've seen this slide before, haven't you? Well, this one is actually mine, so we're in the right time and space. The question of the day for me is, what story are you telling on the walls of your cave? Now, that may seem like an odd story, except that we've been doing this for a really, really long time. If you look at this story, we have a lovely little family shot here. Mother, child, spear. <laughs> Can't tell you I understand the whole story that's going on, but I do know there's a story here just as much as I know there's a story here. The difference of what we've got going on today is we have more mediums to play with. So instead of just seeing mom, mother, child, weapon, now we see this big, soft chair. And when I see that, I see a parent holding their child, and I hear a story of relationship. These people aren't just having offspring, they're building family. When I look at this crib, I see the bars, and I see a story of safety. And when I look at the square footage we give to one individual, I see a story of independence and of huge value on individuality. Now, the next one is about a business, because we're also telling our stories on businesses. When I walk into a space like this, and this happens to be the lobby of a high-tech company, what I see is our message is as contemporary as our furniture. And when I sit down in these, red, in these brown chairs, these things are just a trip. When you sit down, you kind of sit back like you're on a theme park ride, and you feel like you're about to get launched, which is exactly what this company wants you to think. They want you to believe that if you come and work with them, they are going to launch your business. Yeehaw! Perfect match of mission statement to interior. Now, as we heard earlier with Irma, not every story is cheerful. And when we're in a sad place, or there's been trauma, or there's some sort of uh, recession, let's say, it's not uncommon for us to retreat into our caves. And we'll describe that by closed blinds, low lighting, locked doors. The really important thing to remember is no matter what story you're telling, and no matter where you are in that story, you can change it. You see, the way this works is everything in our physical experience cues thoughts into our brain. Those thoughts lead to behavior patterns. Those behavior patterns render results. You want new results? Put in new cues. For example, sitting there in my bedroom one day, and I'm thinking, you know, I'm ready for a little more romance in my story, a little more ooh in my ooh-la-la. And I look around my bedroom and I say, what kind of cues do I have to the sensual woman that I am? And this is what I see. <laughs> Meet my mother. Now, I don't know about you, and there's no judgment here, but when I think about the ooh-la-la, this is not the face I want to see. <laughs> so I had to go in and change the picture. This is the face I want to see. He's here, by the way, so he's taken, just so you know. I look at this picture, and I remember this trip. And I look at this picture, and I remember feeling so loved. And when I feel loved, I bring my best to my relationship. And when I bring my best, the ooh-la-la happens. Now, what happens when the story isn't as obvious? I went through a whole behavior pattern where I could not break this habit of having a cluttered office. I just couldn't break it. And I couldn't get to the story that under, that, that's under it, that was driving the behavior. And then one day, someone knocked on the door. And in that knock, I had this absolute panic. God forbid that's a brand new client with a huge, juicy contract who wants to come to talk to Carol Hamilton, the professional, and he sees this. And in that moment of panic, I saw the window into my story. And my story was, I would only want to see a professional. I would only want to have someone see me in my full professional self. And if I'm not keeping it in my full professional self, it means that ultimately, I'm not convinced that client is coming. I'm telling a story of hopelessness. The most challenging thing any employer can have is an employee without hope. Now you got somebody running the business from that place. Yikes! 
Here's the really cool thing. Once you understand the story you're telling, you can change it, which is what happened. I immediately started cleaning like I knew how, and then decided, why am I waiting for this client to show up with the contract? I'll write the bloody contract. I know what I want. So I sat down, wrote it all out, gave myself a full list of everything I wanted. And of course, why stop there? Because all your eggs in one basket and all that. I wrote five of them. And they are plastered on a wall where I can see them. And all the other distractions are gone. Now, I will, in the name of disclosure, I have not had all of these, these contracts come to full fruition yet. But I know they're coming because I see them every day. So that's how this works. Now, I'm going to ask you to play with me for just a minute here. I'm going to ask all of you to just go ahead and imagine that you're in the space you spend the most time in. You don't have to close your eyes. Don't want your purses stolen or anything. But just pretend that you're in the space that you go to often. And now look around to see if you can figure out why. What's the draw? Is it the big screen TV? Is this where everybody hangs out to have food? Is it your office and you love your job? Is it your office, you don't love your job, but you love the money? What is it that draws you? And as you're in that uplifted space, look around and see if there's anything that maybe doesn't match so well. Is there a piece of furniture that's outlived its expiration date? Is there perhaps a piece of artwork on the wall that was given to you by a former lover who has since turned stalker? <laughs> I know, that's probably just me, but that's okay. And now take a minute and imagine those pieces are removed. They're taken away. And now be in that space without those anchors. Did it just get better? And now just for kicks, last step, find yourself a focal point. Imagine bringing into that space some absolutely fabulous focal point. You want to go on a dream trip? Put a big old poster up there with a big old money jar underneath it that you can feed your coins into every day. Because now you're telling the story of my dream trip, I'm getting closer by the minute. It keeps growing. Look at that fund. If you're trying to bring in the love of your life, think about putting two chairs together like hand holding close. Because you're trying to create the experience of these people being here before they get here. So when they show up, you want to answer the door. Bottom line, our physical spaces have the capacity to put us into a state of inspiration every waking moment. Let me ask you again, what story are your walls telling? Thank you.